everyone, and welcome to Edison TV. My name is Victoria Chernik. I'm an investment director at Edison Group. And today, my guest is Daniel Koller. Dr. Daniel Koller, I should say, the lead, the lead portfolio manager of BB Biotech Fund. This is an investment trust quoted on uh, three stock exchanges with a market cap of over 3 billion Swiss francs. Daniel, welcome. Hi, Victoria. Um, <laughs> nice to be here. Let's let's begin. I mean, with um, with the arrival of 2022 uh, and the biotech industry uh, took an active uh, part uh, to to tame uh, the pandemic and um, came out to the market with uh, lots of products, particularly vaccines. So, what's Beyond the, the pandemic for the uh, within the industry, what are the latest developments, um, and uh, how has the pandemic, if any, how influenced uh, these? First of all, I would say we think the pandemic is actually not over. Obviously, it's it's gotten calmer, and I think the summer months, um, hopefully, we as I said can enjoy that without you know too much obviously of pandemic influence, so to speak, but we nevertheless see ob obviously circulating and still circulating um, um, quite aggressively. So our worry is more towards fall and winter season. So uh, as we have outlined uh, multiple times, we think this is going to be now, you know, between endemic and pandemic phase, cycling in and out. The influence it had on the industry actually was said that I think the attention span from reg regulator, healthcare authorities, um, the healthcare systems, obviously even to us as consumers of those vaccines or sometimes products and diagnostics, um, has obviously been pushed massively or substantially towards all efforts around uh, the SARS-CoV-2. And I think that has now as well shifted a bit. So we have seen a certain, I would say, under attention rather than an under investment or no progress in other fronts, because actually in the meantime, the industry, the rest of the industry that had less to do with, with the pandemic actually has continued to invest uh, quite aggressively. So we have seen some clinical trials uh, delayed in certain areas. We have seen, um, um, obviously I said, certain resources uh, reshuffled. But now in recent times, I would say we see all these technologies that the industry has worked on actually delivering um, on, on new, very exciting uh, clinical trial results, ultimately assets or medications and drugs that, that as I said, help patient and, and the healthcare system. And one I would love to highlight uh, that just came in recent days and weeks was, for example, Al Nylum's um, update in a disease called uh, TTR uh, cardiomyopathy. Um, where I said patients, for example, have uh, too much of a so-called toxic protein that accumulates in the heart and then leads obviously to, to weakening of the heart over time. There we have seen a very positive phase three study. And I think that's once again, a proof, for example, just in the field um, of RNA medicine, how transformative some, some of these uh, medicines can be. So I think the attention from investors, on the other hand, has cycled as well. Um, so we obviously see uh, initially uh, the sell-off in, in the markets um, um, uh, that we had there in, in spring of 2020. Then the rebound, when I said the biotech industry was discovered as one of the major uh, solution providers uh, to the pandemic as such, and then has abated quite a bit in the sense that we saw substantial sell-offs in, in, in 2021. Okay. All the way up to first and second quarter. Okay. And now quite a rebound driven, I said, by good fundamental updates, M&A uh, that we can speak on. And I think that that's the positive, uh, at least from my take, that now fundamentals play a big role once again. Okay, okay. I see, Daniel. Yes, now you mentioned the um, very high volatility uh, within, within the industry. It's uh, going, going up, uh, up and down. So... Where, where are we now? Is now a good time um, to, to invest in, in biotech, um, um, either top up or enter as a new investor? Where are the sector valuations? You mentioned the market went up and down. It, it, yeah. Compared to history, where are we now and, and, um, and the broader equity market? 
Yeah, so let me start quickly on the valuation. So although we saw a, a small rebound now the last couple of weeks, say driven by, I would say, strong or some strong fundamentals and, and, and uh, initial first M&A transaction, we think there are many, many more to come in, in the next quarters and years. Um, I would say valuation is a difficult terminology, so to speak, in biotech, because we have everything we have from the large cap biotechnology players, the more advanced ones that sometimes trade from the, you know, the mid to high single digit um, all the way to the, I would say, cleanest growth stories like a vertex to 18, 20 times um, price earnings, which we still think is, is very attractive. But there's not such as a mean or a median. You can obviously uh, um, call out those numbers, but they don't mean much. We look at them on an individual basis. And on the other extreme side, we have then still smaller and even micro cap names. Actually, many in the company, there were once 150, almost 200 companies that traded well below cash on the balance sheet, which just, oh, gives, a hint, <laughs> which just gives a hint actually of the pressure um, or, or the negativity, let's say, from Wall Street's perspective um, um, towards, towards the sector. So. I think on, on that level, I said, we've seen 70 plus percent drawdowns in the small micro cap segment, much less so than obviously in the large cap. So we've seen this wide spectrum in biotech because said biotech is a very vibrant, but as well a very diverse industry. It's not like other healthcare sectors where I said you have very clear um, and peer groups that are all trading plus and minus. And in historic terms, I said, I would say we still see the large caps actually uh, close to trading to the lows because in the meantime, they have grown further in terms of top line and bottom line. Um, and the mid caps um, depreciated as well. And they're in the mid caps so or companies mid and smaller cap that are not yet profitable. We deploy obviously discounted cash flow. So DCF models um, to calculate the so-called net present value. And there we still see the very same than what we have seen a couple of months ago that we say towards at least our internal assumption, we see one of the biggest um, discrepancies, meaning the highest upside we have seen now over the last couple of years. And that's driven as well by obviously a lot of market fear, um, having been in, in, in February, obviously a dramatic situation in Ukraine and Russia uh, or the invasion of Ukraine having been China has it been the inflation um, that's obviously triggered in interest rate cycles um, so there we had obviously macro topics that that uh, were general difficult for the markets but I said now rebound and the positive I think a clear distinguish the clearly distinguishing market that reflects well on good news and positive news you get them an uptick in valuation once again or I said m a that happened at double and even higher price points than where they trade on stock markets are for us all indication that we think the fundamental side is very strong, is underappreciated and undervalued. Uh, but obviously we don't have a crystal ball to say now, will Biotech um, continue just to run up? Uh, we think markets will stay a bit volatile, um, but Biotech is a very good investment topic if you have a mid and longer term investment horizon, because we think, as I said, the returns are um, or have been very solid in the past. They come obviously with certain volatility. On the other hand, you have a very um, mm -hmm. attractive return if things go, go well. Okay, yes, so that's fascinating. But you mentioned, Daniel, um, this is a big and diverse industry. Uh, so what, what is particular um, about buy and why would investors, you measure yourself um, relative to the NASDAQ um, index, NASDAQ Biotech, what are particular features of buy and is it, it's a quite a large fund, so more than 3 billion um, Swiss francs, so do you invest more in larger caps, smaller caps, it's a, it's a balance, uh, sort of tell us about, about the fund and how it's dif it different from the index and the peers. Yes. So I said the main index that the industry uses is in our case, the Nasdaq Biotech Index has now over 300 constituents, is obviously as pretty much almost or all the index in the world geared towards uh, the large caps. 
in terms of their weight. So as what we always say, you kind of like, if you buy the index or an index like uh, product, you obviously buy the historical success companies uh, that have grown, meaning the large caps are overrepresented in that case. But it clearly has a very different approach. So we have um, disease areas that we like, for example, I said oncology, um, the neural space as such, then segmentation within um, the biotech industry being, for example, the orphan markets, meaning rare disorder where the biotech is at its best. Um, then all the way to obviously that we invest along the so-called S-curve, meaning we start to build position when the companies are in the small to mid cap range, somewhere between 500 million and 2 billion um, of, of market size, all the way up to five, take substantial stakes and then keep this position for the mid and long term, hopefully on and obviously, as we have proven in the past with, with uh, solid um, um, performance or returns by these companies then following the milestones, products approved, revenue and profit growth to come, turning large cap, and then we would take profits and, 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 and reshuffle that. I think the core difference is we run a concentrated portfolio of around 30 names over the last many years now. We have a maximum number of 35 holdings. We can have a gearing or a leverage. Uh, so we normally invest between 5% cash and 50% um, um, or 150% investment degree. And I said, our strategy is to pick companies uh, when they start clinical trials, have first human proof of concept, uh, finance these companies. Um, and then I said, uh, retain them for the long term um, to drive, I said, over proportional return. I think we have proven that um, over the mid and long term that we can generate uh, quite a lot of alpha. Um, this is said with a such a concentrated portfolio comes with slightly higher risk profile. So you have somewhat higher volatility, but nevertheless, ultimately we think um, we can generate uh, superior returns. And last but not least, what I think is special as well for BB Biotech, that's a bit the speciality of ours. We pay out a dividend of 5% yield. So being invested in a growth sector and in a high growth um, uh, portfolio, you nevertheless have there the blend between the payout that uh, our investor um, um, achieve by a satisfied percent dividend yield that we pay out in March each year versus then the rest in return, obviously coming by capital appreciation. Okay. And I said, supported by a big team, it's supported by obviously, um, I would say, um, 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 a board of directors uh, team that is quite engaged. Um, so we think, I said, Biotech offers here a lot of value for our mid long term investors. Okay, yes, um, um, it, it does, it does sound like a completely uh, a differentiated um, um, fund for, for, from the index and peers being such a concentrated mandate of. Um, up to 30 names and um, um thank you thank you daniel and uh, we hope to see you again uh, soon in um, on medicine tv